There have been a few videos released recently from some of my YouTuber technology peers that address why they've moved back to the Intel-based MacBooks, even though the M1 Macs are the latest and greatest thing from the old Apple company. Not the app, not the fruit company, but the, the computer company. However, I won't be critiquing them in this video. Those videos are great. I love those creators. And nobody needs to explain their technology preferences to anyone else. Certainly not me. However, I still not only love the M1 computers from a technical standpoint, I also continue to use them on a daily basis as both my main and backup computer. So uh, why is that? Let's find out. <laughs> wow, that was totally failed in front of that. That's embarrassing. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad. If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So yes, back on the love train of the M1. And while I know, I know I've made a lot of these videos, and I know some of you in the comments would not want me to make any more videos. However, a lot has happened in the past few months that really makes me reevaluate the state of where the M1 sits inside of the consumer computing hierarchy. Plus, it seems like everyone went back to their Intel computers, and I'd like to show that you can still actually get long-term work done for a great value with the M1s. Though, when I say I'm using these computers, what am I talking about? Gary, you, okay, you use them. Which ones do you use? Well. For my main computer, I'm using the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of unified memory and the one terabyte solid state drive. And as a travel work computer, I've been using the base model MacBook Air, which you all know my feelings on this, but the base model MacBook Air is the best value computer probably ever made. I mean, this thing, it's so remarkable. You've seen the videos. I'm not gonna talk, we're not gonna talk about it. Let's get to the reasons that I still primarily use these. I'm a hybrid project manager and YouTuber. So I do two very different things all at the same time. And I'm not necessarily a fancy YouTuber. So all of those creative plugins and third party software that I see a lot of other folks need, that's not something that I ever use. I need enough power, enough battery life, and I'd like to not spend too much money. And typing, oh boy. Let's talk about typing. I, uh. I do it a lot. First, and probably the most obvious reason that I go with Apple instead of one of the new super powered AMD laptops, and I talk about it all the time, it's video editing. I love, love how well Apple Silicon handles video editing. I make pretty simple YouTube videos. I don't do a lot of fancy edits or transitions or needed plugins, so I can and do use a pretty vanilla version of the Apple video editor, Final Cut Pro. If you were to ask me if Final Cut Pro worked on Windows as well as Apple, would I be so firmly in Camp Mac? Well, thankfully, that's a question I don't really need to answer, so it's probably never gonna happen, so. Cop out maneuver successfully initiated. Video editing with any of the M1s is actually really great. You get comparable speed, power, and rendering that I normally expect on a much bigger and much more expensive machine. But the real unique part of the M1s and what it really gets me in a practical, demonstrable way is that I can now use a 100% high efficiency workflow. That means my cameras are using settings that I wouldn't dare use on any other style of computers except those outrageously powerful Ryzen 5000 series laptops. High efficiency means that I can shoot a higher quality file, in this case 4K 10 bit, and it'll be half the size compared to a more traditional video file. It's great. It saves me time. It saves me money. It saves me space. Because my files are smaller, I can use smaller SD cards, saving money. They transfer from the SD card to the computer much faster because they are smaller, saving me time. And I can have more files on the computer and need less overall long-term storage, saving me space. It's all around a win-win. And I would have paid a whole bunch of money for that. I would have paid a whole bunch of money for that. And that I get it at this very reasonable price, that's legit. Seriously, for a second. And I guess this is kind of a humble brag. It's not meant to be a humble brag. But this channel makes enough money that I could buy almost anything to make my process easier. I could buy a cinema camera. I could buy a Mac Pro. I could buy so much stuff, but I don't because the best option for me and my workflow at any price is that tiny Mac Mini. The next part isn't necessarily specific to the M1. It's really all Macs, but I'm also crafting this video in response to the new kit on my computer block, the Asus Zephyrus G14, which has made a very strong argument for me to maybe go Windows for my travel computer. I just enjoy the small perks of using Mac OS. I like being able to work on a document, such as say this script, or maybe a work email, but also use iMessage to text my wife or other members of the team. It drives me crazy 
when I'm using that G14 or I'm using my desktop PC and I get a text message because it means I'll have to totally disrupt everything I'm doing to stop, check the message, respond, and get back to work. And I know that sounds like a tiny thing. Sounds like a tiny thing. You don't even have to check your phone, Gary, but if you're working, you gotta check your phone. And it does only take up a small fraction of time, but those add up over time. And maybe it's just me, this could just be me, but that small break in concentration, moving from the keyboard to the phone, back to the keyboard, it takes an awful lot for me to get back into the rhythm of what I was doing. And that's not to mention my given social media habits, that if I check my phone, I'm also probably gonna be checking Twitter, which at best will only take up five minutes of my life. Here on Apple, I stay in the exact same position, click on the other box, type in my message, and I'm back. I know Windows and Android have been working on similar integrations in recent times, but I'll almost certainly never use an Android phone again, so I'm kind of stuck for Mac if I want this kind of usability. Look, I love Windows machines. I do not like Android phones. I'm sorry. Plus, and I promise I'm not gonna go through an entire Apple ecosystem argument here, but the part of me that's a photo and video editor could not live without AirDrop. Yes, Google Drive and other sharing methods exist, but nothing is faster or more seamless than to take a picture with my phone or record a quick clip for a video and then just drop it onto my Mac. It's so fast, it's so smooth, that it seems crazy that you can't do the same with other computers and phone combination. I wish so much sometimes that I could take a document from my work phone and move it or drop it as quickly between my work laptop, which dude, it's a Dell. Get it from the, from the commercials? The next reason that I continue to use the M1 Max, and in this case, the Mac Books, is that it basically just has magical battery life. For this part, we're moving away from the YouTube video editor persona, back to the guy that works nine to five persona. The guy that works nine to five persona is way more boring, let me tell you. The 18 hours of battery life on the MacBook Air, it's just a number, much like benchmarks or other whiz-bang cool information that we all love looking at in the infographics, but it doesn't really matter. What matters from a practical standpoint is this computer will not die during a working day. I've used this for hours to have a small sliver of the life take away. And if you aren't an office worker or other working professional, that probably doesn't mean all that much to you. But for me and others like me, this kind of battery life is peace of mind. I no longer think about battery life at all. It's so good that I don't have to stop and ponder. Okay, yeah, I'm going to this meeting across town later today, but I also have a meeting this morning over here. Can I bring my computer to both meetings or will that be too much on the battery? Do I need to find a place to charge? Do I need to bring my external battery? What do I need to have with me to make both of these things happen? I do not think about that anymore. The battery on my MacBook Air is just a constant. Like the air I breathe. I know it's going to be there and power on. And that might sound, I'm a YouTuber, I get it. That might sound like some flowery hyperbole, but I'm a pretty detail-oriented person and my brain is always racing to try and figure out how something will go wrong. The battery on my computer is now something that I never even have to consider. And what's crazy is I could probably forget to charge it overnight and still be totally at ease with power for the next day. Peace of mind is something that I would and have paid an absolute premium for. You cannot put a price tag on not needing to worry if you are a constant worrier like myself. And then I get to worry about less stuff with one of the least expensive computers on the planet. Sign me up. Sign me, I would like to curse right here, but I'm not going to, but sign me up. If I didn't already own one of these, I'd buy another. It's, that's not even the end of it. There are two things that drive me crazy during a meeting. And yes, this includes virtual meetings when people don't know how to mute themselves, which a year into working from home, you'd think they'd have figured it out. One, overly clicky mechanical keyboards, and two, when someone's computers won't stop having the fan blasting. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but it seems like every single person I work with has decided to buy a Cherry MX Blue keyboard in the past few months. And I hear them click clacking in my sleep. Every, I don't know what it is. Why has everybody bought one of these mechanical keyboards so far? The M1 MacBook Air fixes both of these issues. First, the Magic Keyboard is just the best keyboard to type on. It's not very mechanical sounding. So you can type without drawing laser focus attention to you or interrupt everybody else as they're trying to brief. It's so nice and refreshing to type on. You can do it all day without getting that tiredness on the top of your hands. Does, does anybody else get that? Is that just me? Like if I'm using my mechanical gaming keyboard to type, after a while, I just feel tired on the top of my hands. 
Maybe that is just me. But no problems here with the Magic Keyboard. And yes, again, that's not wholly specific to the M1s, but this other part is. This is dead silent. This is dead silent in operation. It's right up there with battery life as something that I don't know that I could live without it in a professional setting. The MacBook Air specifically doesn't have a fan, so it can't make any noise like that CPU processing noise that you used to be able to hear quite clearly through your grandma's Tandy desktop computer. But now if you wanted to hear it here, you need like a stethoscope. You need to shh, shh. It's not on, so I, I can't hear it anymore. This is like the stealth bomber of workplace laptops. When in use, there is no noise, so you won't be having a conversation only to have a computer surprise everybody when the fans do that <gasps> out of nowhere. Like you're just sitting in a meeting, just all of a sudden, somebody's computer decides it's their time to shine. And while you are typing, nobody will really hear it. Stealth mode activated. I felt like some 90s cartoon right there. And the last reason I continue to use these Macs is gaming. No, seriously. Seriously. I've kind of been bitten by the WoW Classic bug because TBC release is right around the corner. And I've... You know, I've been working on getting a couple of my characters to level 60 in preparation, which is nice because Blizzard has a client that's optimized for the M1, so I can easily hold 60 frames per second on any of these computers. The MacBook Air, Pro, and Mini, they all handle WoW pretty easily. But I'm not sure that that's like a notable thing. It's an, I mean, it's an ancient game at this point, so there should be no issues running it on a TI-83 calculator. But being able to get my work, creation, and gaming all done on the same computer is actually really nice. Other games might run fine too. I play a simulation game called RimWorld. I don't really play a lot of graphically intense games because, eh. And I definitely wouldn't try doing anything VR related on the M1 Max. I mean, maybe with that rumored Apple VR system, that will change my mind. But as today, I'll use my desktop PC to get my Half-Life Alex fix. And yes, I've been playing way, way too much World of Warcraft. But all I need to do is get that first character to 60 and then it'll be all right, right? Right, it'll be all right and then, Maybe I'll need to get some dungeon items. Maybe I'll need a profession or two. I'll need to give at least up to BWL or AQ40 a shot, right? And this is how two months later, I'm locked into my office and no more YouTube videos have come out. If you don't see any more YouTube videos, it's because I got hooked on that. Look, computers are powerful today. It's not exactly novel to see even small portable laptops having power that rivals or surpasses what last gen desktops were able to do. But it is rare and unique to have such a combination of power, price, size, and functionality all in one computer lineup. There isn't anything else in the market that you can buy that will do what the M1 Max can do. Try. I have so many laptops in this house. None of them can do the same thing. They are absolutely the best option on the market at any price, and I continue to use mine on a daily basis. And if you like this video, if you like this video and you want to see a little more about the M1s, well, good news. I've got a whole gigantic series covering them in excruciating detail because we do, it's been about a month, but we talk about these kind of often because I heart them. You can find it by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.